Where are we, Joaquin? I don't even know where we are. We are going to a secret lake. We're going to a secret lake, invited by a neighbor and their family. It's at Ish. We're going high up into the Sierras at a lake that's like impossible to get to. There's a crazy road to get to it. Only four-wheel drive trucks can get up there. You'll see that in a minute. And uh, apparently, it's Dr. Fish. It's just a daddy-son kind of trip. I'm getting to that age where uh, I have a kid that's old enough to drag him out of the house, drag him away from his iPad, and get him on uh, some cool scenery, go a little more remote than we're used to, and see if we can catch some fish together. So, Joaquin, you ready to do this? Yeah, it's called Dad and, and Son Bonding. I think that's what it's called. And uh, hopefully uh, we don't bond with the tree. So let me get back to driving and we'll see you the crazy road to the secret lake. Here we go. Bye. Bye. Day two. Unfortunately, the smoke that we forecasted to come in has come in, and uh, it's pretty bad. This isn't fog. This is smoke. And uh, actually, took uh, my kayak out yesterday. Didn't catch anything, but I was marking lots of fish. It was more of a reconnaissance mission, more than anything. But I mean, just look at all the dust and and uh, you know from the drive up and the ash that settled on all my gear. Can you see that? Looks like somebody sprinkled pepper and salt all over my stuff. So as a Californian, man, N95 masks, synonymous with uh, just everyday living the last two years. If it's not COVID, it's smoke. And uh, smoke has uh, found its way here to this lake. Probably not gonna be fishing for a little bit. Um, we're kind of hoping for a windy day, frankly. Um, you know, a wind that's gonna blow that way, not this way, and uh, clear the lake for us so we can actually have some safe, uh, you know, recreation on the lake. I don't know if that's gonna happen today. Um, so in the meantime, let's get breakfast started. I'll show you our camp, how about that? Here she is, got us up that crazy trail in one piece, and here's our camp. Pretty simple camp, cooking station, got sausages ready to go. We got our little tent, I actually have like three tents, but this is the little one that we uh, started off with when we had no kids. So this is perfect for Joaquin, myself. Got a little rock for drying our shoes, gonna sell up a solar shower. Of course, got a fishing station for all the fishing stuff that I may or may not use because of the smoke. And check it out, creme de la creme, our outhouse. For when times are tough, an outhouse. Bacon and sausage and toast. And a little toaster. Is there um goes over the flame. Oh so it's not fired up yet, yeah? No, yeah, it'll be like the last thing I do. I guess I'll I've never used it actually. I just opened it. Oh cool. Yeah. You guys you just sit it over the burner and it toasts oh, it. Oh, okay, I yeah, see. Right there. Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to do something that I've never done before, and that's narrate a catch. Unfortunately, the drive into the site was so rough that the auxiliary mic to my primary GoPro that you're looking at now actually broke. And so while I thought that I had everything running smoothly, 
the main mic on the front of the kayak was inoperable and the sound you're hearing now is coming from the rear facing GoPro with the mic. So check out the trolling hit on the left side of your screen. I've never had a trout hit this hard. Check it out. I've never seen a stock trout hit that hard. It must be the power of a wild trout, trout that you know are constantly moving, trout that have grown up in streams and current. And I promised myself that I'd let my son reel in this catch without me interfering. I have a tendency to grab the rod and help him out, but this time I wanted him to feel the fight. I did reach over to the line to test his drag and it was said okay. Just wanted to make sure that he could bring it in uh, without the fish you know, breaking the line. I had no idea how big it was because I've never had a hit that hard. We actually had a cheering section. Everyone on the shore was cheering for my son as he was bringing the trout in. Now look at the angle of his rod. I told him, keep the rod at a 45 no matter what the trout does. And I'd circled the fish. And sure enough, like a little pro, he kept it right at 45 and was able to position the fish for me to land it. Victory. Super proud dad moment. Of course, I had to show it off to everyone on the shore. Clipped the fish, took a look at the adipose, the color, and just the beautiful tail. I knew for sure that we had our first wild trout. So awesome. All right, so we caught our trout. Still has his colors. Beautiful wild fish. How do I know that? His coloring is just awesome. Super dark. He's been in the sun for a while. He has his full adipose. And just as important, he has his full tail. So he hasn't been in a pen. And a uh, pretty small chance that he was a clipped fish um, or an unclipped uh, released stocky. So yeah, I think he's just on his way out. So I didn't really bleed him. So let's go ahead and gut him. Just gonna insert the tip of my fillet knife right into his butthole and slowly open the belly all the way up to the guts. Cool thing about these native fish is that they should be really nice and pink on the inside. Yeah, looks great. So gonna go ahead and scrape out the guts. There's a female, I know that because she had eggs in the gut cavity. And you're just gonna take your thumb, you could do it with the spoon or your thumbnail, and you're gonna put your thumb right at the back of the bloodline and press and scrape it out. Don't be afraid to push with some pressure against the spine and you should get the rest of that bloodline and the rest of the guts. So we're just gonna take this, whip it through the water a few times, get it nice and clean, bag it, put it on ice, and save her for dinner. Wild rainbow trout, fry it up with some rice. Doesn't get better than that. Check it out. Hidden waterfall, hidden lake, we're the only ones here. You made it. How'd you do that? Oh, that's awesome. Can't wait. The lake card, paying off. Thank you. 
pour in our water, mix it up. Pass the finger test. Yeah, baby. That has got to be a wild rainbow trout. Beautiful. All right, Joaquin, we made our beautiful rainbow trout, our native rainbow trout. I'm pretty sure this is a wild trout, and you can tell by the color. It is definitely not Safeway grade. It is pink like a salmon. So, Joaquin, before we open up our drinks, let's take our first taste test. Pan fried, salt and pepper, did bone in. Did you take off the bones? Nope. They are in there. So there's probably going to be a couple of bones, so just be careful. What do you think? Pretty good? Mm hmm. Mmm. Wow. It really tastes like, like a fresh trout. Like, it doesn't taste like a Safeway trout, right? Uh -huh. It tastes like something we just caught, which we just did. Kept them alive on the stringer. Gutted, scaled, kept them on ice. When we were ready, put them in the fryer. Probably like, I don't know, five minutes on each side. And then one kind of big fry at the end to crisp them up. With rice and a little bit of seaweed. It's pretty good. Let's do a quick cheers. KSA for me. Kern's Guava for you. Cheers, buddy. Great camping trip. Before we leave, you gotta do it for the subs. Take a taste of that crispy fried tail. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. It was all worth it. All the smoke, the time it took, all the damage to my car probably that I haven't seen yet, all worth it for that crispy fish tail. You guys, I think we're gonna end it here. We might end up leaving early tomorrow, but if that's the case, that's how the cookie crumbles. That's how the tail crisps up. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it, Joaquin. Thanks for being a good camper. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Pretty good, huh? <laughs>